Good morning, everyone. We are here to talk about DrupalCon Asia and do a debrief on what happened back in February in Mumbai, India. Um, starting out for DrupalCon Asia, we had four main goals. We really wanted to unite the Indian community and connect them with the world. Uh, we wanted to accelerate the project, so we wanted to bring sprints to uh, the local community and, and emphasize what they've already been doing and, uh, and make sure that we increase con contribution from an already top con contributing country. Uh, we also wanted to grow the talent pool and skill level of Drupal developers in India and connect talent with employers. Overall, we ended up with just over a thousand conference attendees. Um, our summits were pretty popular. We had 59 people at our community summit, 55 people at our business summit, 29 at our higher ed summit, and 53 at the government summit. Uh, we also had 293 people participate in trainings, um, 150 of which were a, an introductory uh, uh, beginner's Drupal training course that was free of charge. Um, overall, the, the demographics for DrupalCon Asia were pretty similar to other cons, uh, especially when it, we look at the breakdown between beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, we obviously had quite a few developers there, which is great. We kind of anticipated that. Um, we also had quite a lot of uh, business level uh, people using Drupal, so that was kind of exciting to see. Um, attendees represented quite a few different industries. Uh, the strongest represented industries were government, education, nonprofit, tech services, and media. Overall, the financials for Asia came in about what we had anticipated. Um, we went into this event anticipating a negative net income, um, and we came fairly close to what we had originally projected. Um, what's interesting here you'll see is that we have zero dollars in ticket revenue and I'm sure that people are watching this and thinking well I know I paid money for <laughs> for my ticket to attend DrupalCon Asia. Um, the reason why we are showing zero dollars on our balance sheet is the tax structure in India. Essentially um, IIT uh, Bombay was in charge of all of the ticket price or ticket ticket revenue excuse me ticket revenue collection and then with that money, they paid um, direct expenses for the event. So they paid that money directly towards our catering bill. So our catering amount is lower in our next slide, with it, which is expenses. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a, a moot point. So it doesn't add, add revenue, but it also takes away uh, expense. So um, overall, you'll see that we had $127,000 uh, in um, sponsorship revenue, which is great. We had a goal of $100,000, so we were really excited with how um, businesses stepped up to support this conference. Um, here is a breakdown of what we had anticipated and where we ended up with final um, ticket sales. Um, again, we came up a little bit short on our conference tickets, which was a little bit disappointing, but um, as I showed in the previous slide, we luckily went over on our sponsorship revenue, so that went uh, a long ways to making up that difference um, in revenue. Here are the expenses for um, DrupalCon Asia. One of the most interesting things to me is that we have a zero dollar internet bill and so I thought I would put that in there even though it was a non-expense. Um, one of the great things about partnering with IIT Bombay is that they have really great internet that they provided to us free of charge. A few things that we learned about um, executing a DrupalCon in Asia were uh, that it was a little bit difficult to operate financially in India without having a local business entity or agency established. So the Drupal Association does not have a, uh, you know, a, a local Indian outlet. And so we had to find um, what was the most you know, optimal way for us to operate there where we could collect sponsorship revenue and collect ticket revenue and pay expenses. Um, and try and do that with limiting our um, tax liability. Another thing that was uh, interesting was we ended up with more free tickets than projected. And again, um, we ended up at about the overall headcount that we'd hoped for. So we were right on that, that forecast. Uh, but it, the breakdown came in a little bit higher, slanted towards free tickets than paid tickets. And that's just one of those uh, happy benefits of having more sponsors. So as a part of a lot of sponsorships, a lot of uh, those packages include free tickets. 
Um, we, it was a little bit difficult to operate in two currencies. Um, and again, uh, the tax laws were pretty complicated and had different rules based on um, where maybe a, an organization uh, was located when they were paying sponsorship dollars. And so it was a little bit uh, tricky to navigate, although we were able to come up with a plan uh, to do so. Uh, we had quite a bit of marketing activity around DrupalCon Asia, and the activities that we did kind of fell into a few categories. We did a lot of content marketing on our blog, um, quite a bit of social media marketing on tw Twitter and Facebook. Um, we always communicate with our attendees by uh, email through MailChimp, and uh, we partnered with quite a few local camps and meetups and local community leaders. Um, we also uh, partnered with a marketing agency to who donated their services to um, create some content for us. And if you see in the bottom right corner of the slide, uh, we had a wonderful uh, photography team led by Michael Cannon who uh, took some really, really beautiful photos of, of the event. And if you haven't checked out the Flickr page uh, for DrupalCon Asia, I would highly recommend it. There's a ton of really beautiful photos from the event. Um, so some of the... Uh, results from the marketing activities, you know, it was really interesting to work with some local marketing partners and local marketing leads. Um, for the Drupal Association, it was a somewhat new or unfamiliar audience, although we've done work with our friends in India for a while um, to do things directly to them. Uh, it, was just a, it was just a new way to, to operate, and we were happy to partner with Niswe, who uh, made content for our blog. Uh, they made a comic and a post per month, and the comics especially got a lot of blog, or excuse me, got a lot of buzz. Um, and so we, one of the things that we, uh, one of the lessons we learned from working with Niswe was that if we do something again uh, in that way, we want to make sure that the partner knows our community nuances. So sometimes we had to work with them a little bit on revising some of the um, content. Uh, but overall, we were super uh, excited with what uh, we were able to get from Niswe and the community really responded well to it. Um, we also had quite a few volunteers help with social media, which was really helpful, um, but a little bit challenging at times just to make sure that we had everybody firing um, in all the right places. So that was a different challenge for staff. Um, but we wanted to make sure that, um, that the volunteers feel free to participate as much as they can and um, often uh, find a lot of things to volunteer with at the cons. Um, so we, one of the lessons that we learned here was that it may be helpful to have um, social media volunteers dedicated to just social media uh, rather than multiple aspects of the con. Uh, but that said, we had a really great experience partnering with local community leads um, to, to get the content out across the social media channels. Um, email is always a, a strong part of, <laughs> of communicating with DrupalCon attendees. Um, one thing that was really interesting is that uh, we email perform or, or email marketing performed slightly under our other cons, um, but they did really well compared to industry standards. Uh, it was interesting to, that this email is probably not the strongest way for us to communicate with DrupalCon Asia attendees. They may just not be as email reliant as um, other con attendees. Um, during during the con, we definitely found that Facebook photos were wildly popular. Uh, anything with photos were were well received because it it was another way to help people kind of follow along from home. Uh, on Twitter, our top performing action had no uh, our top performing link had no action, so we tried to do a bo Bollywood dub smash, which didn't really uh, seem to be pick up too much steam. Um, but we did have a lot of action around our developer contest, um, various apps you can put on your phone. Thank yous to sponsors, and then also words from local community members. Um, we had really good and great engagement metrics, and a lot of that is due to, you know, Mumbai is such a really cool, beautiful city. Um, and people were really having a great time exploring the city with other community members. And um, it was really uh, palpable, not only in person at the event, but all throughout social media to see that um, energized community just really being excited about DrupalCon coming to India. Um, one thing that we noted was that there's just a huge opportunity for growth. Um, there, the community did a really great job of amplifying any messages that we put out there, and we would not have had anywhere near the success we did about getting the word out about DrupalCon Asia uh, without the help of volunteers. So going forward, uh, we would put a, a stronger emphasis on content that answered questions. We found that people reacted really well to that. Um, we wanted to make people feel like they're prepared for DrupalCon, or at least we're at DrupalCon. So uh, trying to really bring that experience home for people that may not be able to attend in person. Uh, the locally, content, locally written content performed really well. 
And for future third cons, we want to focus on um, an emphasis on what to expect when you travel, what the local community is like, what to expect when you get there, um, and also have stronger guidelines and expectations for volunteers so that some channels uh, don't go neglected. Uh, people were really excited about social media engagement, and especially during the con, it really reflected that. Uh, one of our so main social media volunteers commented that we had more Twitter activity for DrupalCon Asia than we do during uh, DrupalCon uh, North America and Europe at times. So people really showed up on Twitter and, and showed their enthusiasm for the event. Uh, we had uh, a wonderful sponsor turnout. Like I mentioned earlier, we blew through our sponsorship goal, which is great. Um, and we had a really positive response from um, sponsors on site and after the event. Uh, many sent uh, the whole team, uh, so sometimes up to 50 people for a company came, which was great. Uh, we had quite a few sponsors showing like local flair and making sure everybody knew uh, about their company and the community they came from. Uh, the community-driven messaging was very prevalent. It was really fun to see uh, how people were trying to share whatever they could, could from wherever they were from. Um, and I think that we had definitely the most creative sponsor booths that I've seen at a DrupalCon. Um, people really took this, the space that they were given and uh, created some really fun activities. There was a lot of laughing and shouting and uh, people having a great time in the sponsorship area. Um, quite a few were focused around photos. We found out how excited uh, attendees were to take pictures with each other and with all the different fun props and, um, and that, that carried through into social media. And uh, the nice thing is the sponsors kept a lot of the conversations going um, long after the event, so people were able to find um, new teammates or new, new employees, um, they were find new partners and, and new service providers. So these were our highest rated, or excuse me, our highest attended sessions. Um, Kotzer's session on Drupal 8 theming was the most popular uh, session at 249 people. These are some of our awesome speakers. Again, there's a ton more pictures on uh, Flickr. And the top ranked session went to Krell. So make your code do your job. And I want to uh, also remind people that at this point, we do have all of the sessions up on uh, the Drupal Association's YouTube page. So some of the things that went really well in sessions, uh, attendees can tell when speakers spend time preparing clean and easy to understand slides. So they really liked when the slides uh, were easily digested. Uh, they also appreciated speakers who practiced and had engaging presentations uh, when they were well rehearsed. And the top rated sessions were described as educational, entertaining, and eye-opening. So they learned something new. So a couple things that we can improve for next time. Some of the sessions had been presented at camps around India before and were not revised to be re new and exciting. So maybe the people had heard them before if they've been to some of those local camps. And there were varying levels of expectations as to the skill levels. So beginner maybe means something different to one person than to the other, and uh, there was some confusion around that. We had a really great turnout for sprints. We had 350 people show up, which was fabulous. Uh, it was over a third of the conference. And what was really fun to see is we had 188 attendees attend the um, first time sprinter workshop and learn how to contribute. And that goes directly back to our original goal of helping accelerate the project, getting more people to learn how to sprint and contribute back to Drupal. 78% uh, of the attendees found the sprints to be useful or very useful, which is really exciting. And so many people listed the live commit by WebChick as one of their favorite moments of the con. And so we put that fun picture of Angie down in the bottom doing the live commit. Um, overall, people were really satisfied with the con. Um, we had a really high uh, favorability um, results in the survey. Some of the things that were people were most excited and most um, satisfied with were, was the location, uh, which was not surprising, uh, being that it was a fun new location in India. Uh, people were also really thrilled with the uh, opportunities for networking, uh, not just with other local Indian community members, but also with the international Drupal community members that came uh, to the event. And people were really um, excited about the speakers and, and session content. Um, another great sign of the conference was uh, how many people really felt uh, they got a good value out of the conference. Um, so we had about, you know, I think it was about 88% of people feel that they got somewhat more or more, much more value than they expected out of, the, um, out of DrupalCon Asia. Um, so the most helpful uh, aspects of the con, uh, people definitely loved the keynotes. Um, not only Dries, but especially uh, Denise's speech. Um, people really uh, felt that they both were kind of on point and, and great messages to be heard. Um, again, people really loved networking and uh, the sessions. And 
luckily we found um, people responded well to the email newsletters that we sent out. So even though we may not have had as many click throughs uh, as we do with other cons, uh, when people were reading those emails, they were finding good and helpful content. So overall, our net promoter score for the event is 58, which is great. Uh, we, it's I think about what we had for uh, New Orleans, which is wonderful. So we've got a good bar set. And we had a, a lot of really great feedback in the survey as far as like what favorite uh, favorite aspects of the con were. So people really loved the keynotes. I heard saw a lot of comments about, I got to meet Drees, it was so wonderful. Uh, and so we also heard a lot about people meeting other people, meeting people in person whom they've only interacted with on IRC or Drupal.org. Um, again, a lot of people really loved the live commit by web chick, so that was a highlight of the sprints. And the pre-note and the flash mob, all the fun things that happened over in the, the, the plenary room. Um, we asked, what would you like more of at DrupalCon? Um, the things that we heard most were um, live demos, uh, more mentored course or more mentored sprints, and a longer conference. People wanted more days. Uh, someone even suggested we make it a 10-day conference, which to me sounds very, very long. <laughs> but I appreciate that people want more DrupalCon. So in summary, the conference was really a community event with tons of volunteers from all over the country and all over the world. Um, I, this event absolutely would not have happened without the help and support of so many volunteers, particularly from the local Mumbai uh, community. Uh, people were really, really thrilled to meet uh, other community members face to face. Um, that was evident when you were there and people were getting all excited to say, oh, I, th I think I see Morton or I'm gonna go talk to, to you know, Hussein or whoever they could see. Um, and so that was really fun to see people making those connections um, live that they often make online. Um, with so many first-time attendees, there was an excited and infectious attitude about making a difference in open source. We had quite a few first-time DrupalCon attendees, and, um, and it was really, really fun to see um, people come to their first con and, and see how big the Drupal community is and what all there is to do uh, within open source. Um, there was, for us in a, an event production standpoint, there were some challenges to planning that could have been managed uh, differently if we do another event in India. Um, uh, the Indian community is very hungry for more Drupal cons, and uh, we came away with a lot of good uh, takeaways as far as ways we can make the process smoother in the future. So going forward, one thing we want to reiterate is how important India is on making an impact in Drupal, especially at DrupalCon. So India is obviously one of the top contributors to uh, Drupal, the project, and the code. Um, but for DrupalCon New Orleans, India was the second country uh, as far as session submissions go, second only to the United States. So that was really fabulous to see uh, the impact that, that DrupalCon Asia had on, on people you know, submitting their ideas and submitting their topics and sessions uh, to DrupalCon. Uh, this DrupalCon uh, helped energize the local community, um, bringing recognition to the accomplishments they are making and creating some buzz around giving back that is continuing with more local activities and newcomers to Drupal. We've heard of a lot of more uh, like new community meetups or camps that are planned in the next year or so, and that's just really thrilling to see um, kind of the ripple effect of having a large event in, in India. Um, if we were to do another DrupalCon in India, I think the financial model would maybe need a little bit of adjustment. Um, making sure that the ticket prices are in line with what, what the market can afford and that also the sponsorship model uh, matches what the sponsor's needs are um, and making sure that there's a good balance between the two so that uh, we can have a financially healthy event. So let me see if there's any questions online. Uh, and it looks like there are not, so I must have done a very good job of covering all the bases. Uh, with that said, if you have any questions, if you're watching this online, uh, we'll record this and post this on uh, YouTube. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is here, and you're welcome to reach out to me on Drupal.org. Uh, thank you for watching.